Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for premium sports picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, from time to time, I like to explore famous crimes that are in the news. Right, as this is a sports forum, I thought I would just talk a little bit about the Oscar Pistorius case. Right, I have another video up where I go in depth on some of the evidence, both physical evidence and eyewitness testimony in that case. But here, what I want people to realize is that there, in my opinion, is a smoking gun in this case. Right? Defendants always come up with a narrative to explain away evidence. But sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes there's a loose thread. Dare I say there's a piece of evidence that literally mocks the defendant's version of events. For example, in the OJ case, right? Just forget about the blood evidence for a moment. Just forget about the evidence that the defense contends was planted by the police, right? I want you to just realize that at that crime scene were footprints from the killer, right? Bruno Magli footprints, right? Bruno Magli's are expensive shoes, right? And those footprints happen to be in O.J. Simpson's shoe size. So the police asked O.J. because his version of the events doesn't have him at the murder scene. They asked O.J., do you own these kinds of shoe? Right? O.J. said no. He did not. Of course, later it came out that there were multiple photos from multiple photographers of O.J. wearing Bruno Magley's at a Buffalo Bills event attended by tens of thousands of people. Right? The photographers couldn't possibly have conspired to Photoshop the shoes on O.J.'s body because the photographers didn't even know each other. In other words, different photographers independently had photographic proof that O.J. Simpson had that kind of shoe. In other words, we know O.J.'s shoe prints were at the murder scene right in the blood of the victims right why did OJ lie to the police I'll leave that for you to decide but the point is simply this OJ's version of events didn't add up his effort to distance himself from the evidence didn't add up before you get to all the other evidence in the case, think about it. A style of shoe that O.J. owned in O.J. Simpson's size is at the murder scene. And O.J. lied about owning those shoes to the police. In my opinion, those footprints mock O.J. Simpson's version of events. Now let's talk about Oscar Pistorius. You've heard the story. He's in bed 
with his girlfriend. It's early in the morning. He hears, and this is his version, he hears what he believes to be a burglar in the bathroom of his house. So, of course, he takes out a gun. Right? Keep in mind, the crime rate in South Africa is high relative to that of the United States. He takes out a gun. He goes over to the door and then fires several bullets into the bathroom right through the locked door. If he's to be believed, he then grabs a cricket bat after hearing through the door that he might have hit his girlfriend who he thought was in bed. So he uses this cricket bat to chop down the door. Then he goes in and finds out that he mistakenly had shot up his girlfriend. There's a smoking gun in this case. Did you know that the cricket bat that Oscar supposedly used just to knock down the door has blood on it? Think about that. Oscar's not supposed to be bleeding at the scene. The blood would necessarily have to be the blood of his girlfriend. Isn't the blood on the cricket bat, which, by the way, was signed by the South African cricket team. In other words, it's not there for protection. This is a commemorative piece that Oscar has around his house. In other words, this isn't the baseball bat by the bed that you have just in case an intruder comes into your bedroom. This is something different. Right? This is really a commemorative piece that you have in your house just to remember the cricket team. This is memorabilia. Now what is Riva Steenkamp's blood doing on the tip of this cricket bat? There's another mockingbird in this case. Did you know that there's blood by the headboard of Oscar's bed. Why would blood be there? I thought Oscar, when he finds his girlfriend in the bathroom, I thought he picks her up and brings her down the stairs. How's there blood by the headboard? More importantly, the duvet that they slept under. Did you know that that was found on the floor? And there's blood on the duvet in the bedroom. But wait, it gets more interesting. Reva's jeans, Reva's pants. Did you know that they're on top of the blood that's on the duvet? Think about it. The jeans, right, her pants, are not in the bathroom. They're outside the bathroom. And they're on top of the blood. The blood's not on top of them. Whatever caused the blood happened before. Reva's pants are put on top of the blood. Right? So let me offer, hypothetically, by my own admission, this is simply speculation, but let me offer an alternative scenario 
that you might want to consider, one that might fit the evidence a bit better than Oscar's version, which doesn't. Understand, like OJ, in Oscar's version, he, of course, is accusing the police of tampering. Right? Because his version doesn't explain the blood in the bedroom. The day before, this killing took place. Reva Steenkamp, on her Twitter account, posted her support of Black Friday, a movement in South Africa to oppose domestic violence. Right, Reva Steenkamp was speaking out against domestic violence. Right, that's who she was. It's always important to think about the victim. Right, Reva Steenkamp is against domestic violence. She's with Oscar Pistorius the night of her death. Right, the next day, Valentine's Day, February 14th. Some neighbors hear voices. There may have been, let me speculate here, there may have been an argument consistent with the voices the neighbors heard between Oscar and Riva. Pistorius loses it. He grabs a commemorative cricket bat right by the bed. One that has signatures on it. In other words, this isn't something that he would ever use for cricket. This is something you have signed, like a signed baseball, that you have on your mantle. Right? He grabs the cricket bat. He hits her in the head with the cricket bat. Now understand, her family saw her body before it was cremated. The family, according to reports, believes that the body clearly shows that she got hit in the head with a blunt object. Right? Oscar hits her with the cricket bat. Hence, the blood on the cricket bat. It's a hard hit. Riva is bleeding. They're in bed. There's blood spatter on the headboard. Riva's had enough. She's against domestic violence. She's not interested in being a victim of domestic violence. She's leaving the house. Right? She gets out of bed. She's still in her nightgown. Right? She's bleeding. Blood hits the duvet. She grabs the pants she's going to wear on her way out. Right? She may not have fully known how much she's bleeding. She puts the fans down on the duvet, which is on the floor, right? Because this argument has escalated. The duvet's fallen to the floor, exactly where the police find it, right? She grabs her pants. She puts her pants on that duvet, which is on the floor. Then she goes to the bathroom to clean herself off. She's bleeding from the head, folks. Hence the blood in the bedroom. She goes to the bathroom to clean herself off before she leaves. She locks the door. Why wouldn't she? Oscar has already been violent to her. He's already hit her with the commemorative cricket bat. Pistorius is pissed off. 
he realizes his life as he knows it is about to end. He has a beautiful girlfriend who's against domestic violence who's about to tell the world that Oscar Pistorius is domestically violent. She has the wounds to prove it. If she goes to a hospital leaving Pistorius, this story likely will make the front page by the evening edition, right? It is Valentine's Day. Image-wise, it couldn't be worse for Pistorius. So what does Pistorius do? Without his prosthetic legs on. Right? In other words, things are moving fast here. Right? She gets hit. She reaches for her pants. She's about to leave. She goes in the bathroom to clean herself off. Pistorius comes after her. She locks the door. He has a gun. It's an assassination. Right? Pistorius then comes up with a story where he then uses the cricket bat to open the door. The problem with the story is it doesn't explain the blood on the cricket bat. The problem with his story is it doesn't explain the blood by the bed headboard. He and his attorney are going to have to do a lot of gymnastics here to try to explain away that part of the evidence, aren't they? So of course now they're questioning the police. Just think for a moment how hard it would be for the police to frame Oscar Pistorius. Also why would any cop want to frame Oscar Pistorius? Up until that point, one of South Africa's most beloved athletes. Right? Also think about it, too. The blood under Reva's pants in the bedroom. Right? Understand if Pistorius, and keep in mind he wouldn't go by there, in bringing her body down the stairs from the bathroom. But understand, let's say Pistorius had gone through the bedroom with Reva's bloody body after finding her in the bathroom. The blood would be under her jeans. Excuse me, the blood would be on her jeans if that happened, not under them. The fact that the blood is under Reva's jeans indicates that the blood happens before she's taken out of the bathroom. Something that's entirely inconsistent with Pistorius' defense in this case. The cricket bat and the blood under Reva Steen Cam's pants are the mockingbirds in this case. Oscar Pistorius' version of events simply couldn't have happened the way he claims. So pay close attention to Reva Steen Cam's head injuries. Is it possible? that in addition to being shot in the head, and keep in mind, we don't quite know the sequence of events, is it possible that in addition to being shot in the head, that she was hit in the head by the bloody cricket bat before the rest of this unfolded? 
how else would you explain the blood by the headboard in the bed? How else would you explain the blood being under her pants? As the pants lay on the duvet, that itself is bloody and on the floor. Why is there blood on the duvet? When you add it up, I think, in my opinion, that Oscar Pistorius is guilty. At a minimum, his version of events are inaccurate. Let me hear from you. If you believe I've misrepresented the evidence, if you believe I'm leaving out salient facts, please leave those points of view in the comment section to this video here on YouTube. Let's continue to discuss this case. Thanks for stopping by.